Howdy all of you delicious people, I'm here today to view the Lazarus Effect. So of course, I'm a Batman fan, and I've heard of Rachel Ghoul or Razzle Ghoul, because uh, it's been pronounced different ways. And so this character was to be able to have this thing called the Lazarus Pit, where he would go on and go into this kind of pool-like thing to nurse some injury or, of course, uh, be able to fully resurrect himself if he was to somehow die. And so... When looking at that character, I kind of naturally assumed that this story would be similar. But it seems that we go on and we have some, like, additions to that. It's not just that this is to be some, like, resurrection-like story. There's to be a lot more that is to be focused upon this film. And so I started to, like, compare this movie to a lot of other things. Uh, really just right off the bat, like, the... Kevin Bacon, Julie Roberts movie Flatliners, like, comes to mind. Uh, but then also, like, the Kevin Bacon movie Hollow Man comes to mind. Uh, or really, uh, the Scarlett Johansson movie Lucy. Or possibly, like, any kind of possession kind of film that you've ever seen. Like, it seems similar to that. Uh... I think there might have been, like, one or two more in there, but I don't know. I, I think that should be just about good enough. On the plus side of this movie, I think it has a really good cast. I think they end up doing, like, a good enough job with the story. Uh, now on the negative. I feel that... Not everything is to be explained. Like, at first, when Zoe used to talk about these dreams, I'm like, okay, like, what was the point of that? But then they end up technically answering it by the end of the film, but still, I'm like, they just left that just bizarrely hanging there, and it didn't make much of any sense. As well as things not making sense, there, of course, is scientific jargon to be used here as if I'm supposed to go on and yay or nay how accurate this is because I'm science person who knows all of the the, the knowledge and, and technical terms of all this to be like, mm-hmm, yeah, they're doing something accurate there. They're they're saying some scientific stuff that seems logically something that they should be talking about. Uh like we go on and we have dialogues about DMT, the drug that you are to have flowing through your body as you are to die and we have frank with his own opinion about it and we have zoe who talks about her own opinion on how like that drug is to kind of help you get to the afterlife and so on and so forth so and there's just a lot of sciencey stuff that they end up uh, like talking about, about like uh, a ray that is going and and plop into your brain that is to uh, put into the serum into your brain. So, so yeah. So there, there's a bunch of sciencey stuff, and so yeah. So with. That said, uh, let's go on and let's just kind of tee it up and, and talk about what this movie is to actually be. So, we have this group of scientists or doctors who are all to decide to have this camera woman there to document their latest experiment as they were to go on and get this grant and be working for this university so supposedly this president daily finds out later that she thought they're working on some certain experiment that they actually aren't doing 
because the experiment that it seems that they are doing is to try to resurrect people. Oh, uh, this movie could also come off like Frankenstein. Because we, at some point, have uh, Clay, who's Evan Peters, who kind of makes the, like, the Frankenstein-like joke. So, we have them going on and experimenting on dead dogs to see if they can resurrect them. And come to find out when they do finally resurrect a dog... Come to find out there is some side effects to them being brought back. And so some characters are coming to the conclusion that maybe they should like re-put uh, the dog back to sleep uh, because he might be dangerous. And so one reason leads to another in this movie, and I'll talk about it more in spoilers... They then have to go on and try to do this experiment again, hoping that they will actually get credited for their findings if they are to go on and do this. And, whoops, we then turn around and have our characters who make a mistake that is to lead them to need to resurrect instead of an animal a human and so once they go on thinking that they can go on and adjust and fix their mistake come to find out that isn't the case no matter what they're gonna do there's always going to be the same similar problem and so that problem will lead them to realizing that slowly but surely, one by one, each one of these doctor slash scientists will get killed off by the mistake that they had made. And so with that said, I'm going to try to kind of leave the rest as being very vague because I'm going to go on and explain that a little bit more in spoilers. So... Right now, this movie is currently available on Amazon Prime. You can go ahead and look that up there. Uh, I think the scares are good in this movie. I think cast is good in this movie. So, like, I feel like this movie is okay. Um, like, grading is just kind of an okay film. Uh, people might have other opinions. They might say that this movie is garbage. Or people might say that this movie is way better than I would uh, go on and say that it is. Because people have their own opinions. Um, but yeah, like, I think that the movie, like, does well with its time allotted. And so, yeah, so it's it's definitely uh, on the plus side. I'll give it a, a thumbs up. So, with that said, let's just go on into double five time territory. Let's be, hopefully, a little bit more specific about this film. Because it's about that time. To go into spoiler time, spoiler time, it's about that time you spoil this movie. So, in the beginning of this film, we have this camera woman named Eva, or Eva? I'm going to go with Eva, who goes on with Zoe to make her way into this laboratory where... These group of characters are working. So Zoe is telling Eva that she is going to have to sign a uh, a non-disclosure agreement, saying that she, or it's like an NDA. Uh, so, which is basically the same thing, because she is to be filming what these guys are experimenting on but uh considering they're being funded yeah like uh a certain portion of the findings are gonna not only go to university but then also the people that are working on this experiment so we have frank and zoe who are talking to eva and 
or Eva, Eva. Let's just go with Eva. E V A. Eva. That sounds good enough. Uh, so we have Frank and Zoe looking on, and Eva is uh, to, of course, be with uh, the other uh, guys who are both Clay and Nico. And Zoe is asking Frank, it's like, well, how do you feel about her? And, like, Frank makes this joke about, well, like, she's sexy and she's this and she's that. And then Zoe's like, oh, is she now? And then Frank is like, yeah, but I love you. Because <laughs> Frank is to have been engaged to Zoe for three years. And supposedly Zoe ends up going on and uh, talking to Nico. And she is to mention that they've been together for three years. And once this experiment happened, like Zoe was still like pining away that they were actually going to get married and that Frank would finally focus on them instead of this experiment but like it just never happened and so Nico ends up telling Zoe it's like well maybe that's telling you something it's like maybe you should finally just kind of break it off because this relationship is just not going anywhere so but we have times when Frank does try to comfort Zoe as Zoe is to have these horrible nightmares where she is in this burning uh, apartment complex, I'm assuming. And Zoe is to be like around flames and so on and so forth. And so she ends waking up and Frank is to say to Zoe, it's like, well... You having the same bad dream again? And Zoe's like, well, yeah. And he's just like, well, okay, just kind of take as much time as you need. So, we have them go on an experiment on this dog who is to have cataracts. And so they end up trying to bring it back to life. So, if we don't have some really good jump scares in this movie, like Nico is to have this kind of pig mask and, and kind of scare Zoe at some point, and then we have this dog that ends up kind of waking up. While they're going through the experiment, Eva is... Or Eva... Fuck. I don't, I don't know whether how it's said or not. I'm going to go with Eva because it just sounds better. F it. Uh, Eva goes on to notice that the dog is moving. And they're like, no, like, I think it's just a muscle, uh, muscle movement. And then the dog finally does come back. And so, like, okay, great. Like, now this is finally working. We also had Frank and Zoe who were to do this video going on and explaining, like, who they are and where this is. And Frank is to break down, like, the science of it all, how there is to be this ray that is to inject serum into a animal or a human at some point that he uh, or... He also goes on and explains all this equipment, making jokes about uh, Millennium Falcon as if, like, all these toggles and whatever to be similar to that Star Wars ship. And that there is to be this one kind of uh, lever that they're going to have to, like, turn the electricity on uh, at certain points to get certain... Uh, jolts being put into a animal's body at a certain time. So, as if, like, this lever kind of seems like the, like, the executioner lever, lever, where they would go on and 
they would have somebody be in an electric chair and then they would pull this lever and and kill someone off. Whereas this is to resurrect somebody. So we have the experiment work with the dog and so they go on and they do an MRI on the dog and they notice that the brain of this dog seems very unusual because only 10% of the dog's brain should be firing but it doesn't seem that way. It seems that there's a lot going on. So we start to realize that there is a possibility that this dog may become dangerous and may become aggressive and so we have a we have clay at one point who is to have this dog in this little uh this little pet cage because he may be unsafe so Clay's with the dog, and at some point, the dog is to appear right in front of Clay and start to growl at him. And Clay is like, "Yeah, this this dog is dangerous, so we should like we should put it back to sleep." So now all heck breaks loose, cause Franklin is to go and talk to President Daly, and. She, of course, is to mention how uh, Frank was to not be working on what he was to say that he was working on. Supposedly, Frank's experiments were to be tied to neurological studies about people in comas. And, like, how their brain fired while they were in comas. And, obviously, the president, uh, Daly, is realizing that Frank is not doing the experiment that he's supposed to. He's going on doing a whole nother thing. So, after Frank is done talking to this president, and he then is to make his way back to his laboratory... Come to find out this pharmaceutical business had gone on to buy out this university and or this this laboratory and so these guys dropped a mass number of uh of millions to buy out this laboratory because Mr. Wallace is to want all of these Uh, like, he wants all of the, uh, information about this experiment. He wants to pers personally go through and take all of their, uh, notes and everything like that. Everything that they, uh, possibly could have on them about this experiment. He wants everything. And so, Mr. Wallace turns around and gets this, and we then have Frank and everybody starting to realize, like, hey, they wanted to steal this from us, like, what are, what are we going to do? Well, Frank decides, is like, well, hey, if we just go on and do this experiment again, then we can still prove that this is ours. And then try to turn around and... and uh, and say that Mr. Wallace can't go on and do the same exact uh, thing because, like, we're to be the legitimate people who are to have gone on and perfect this for Mr. Wallace, who knows? So, they sneak into the lab late at night because it seems that Eva has her card to get into this laboratory, and so. Eva goes in to let everyone else in, and so 
Frank is telling Eva, it's like, well, hey, you can turn back now. And, like, no one's going to know that you're going to be part of this whole thing. And uh, what if, like, they end up getting caught? They can easily get arrested and so on and so forth. So there's a whole, like, legal thing to this also. So... We have our characters go on and try to redo this experiment yet again with another dog who is to be deceased. And so while they're trying to rush and do this experiment, we, of course, have a moment where when Zoe is to adjust this toggle it seems that she is to electrocute herself in the process and frank is to then realize like oh my god she's electrocuted we're gonna have to try to like defibrillate her and cpr her to try and bring her back and she dies so frank turns around and decides like well hey like we can just use this serum to bring her back and, like, again, this will be all the proof in the world that, like, we can, that we are the ones who did this. So, while they try to experiment on Zoe to bring her back, we have this security guard that starts walking by. And so all the characters now have to kind of hide themselves, hoping that the security guard won't notice and will just head back. So... Frank and the group had tried to go on and do this experiment on Zoe, hoping that it was going to work out. And by the time that they do this experiment, they look onto the body and realize that Zoe had woken up. So Frank is to notice that Zoe's in shock. And... So Zoe is to realize, it's like, well, hey, did I just die? Because, of course, there is to be some, some telltale signs of that. So, we start to have characters who are asking Zoe questions about, like, well, hey, like, uh, like, well, did you, like, do you remember anything? Like, uh, from you dying? Like, did you see white light? Like, what what did you see? So, come to find out, Zoe had gone to hell. Because, evidently, Zoe had seen this repeated thing going over and over and over into her brain. And it was that nightmare that she was to have days before and so she's like yeah like out of all the things that i could have ever gone and done like i still wound up in hell anyways so zoe is to at some point have this dog kind of uh hover over her and so zoe slowly but surely is to start showing signs that something is wrong with her as we have guys like clay who is to realize after having zoe do this mri that it's like well hey like this girl is going to be doing using way more than just 10 percent of her brain because the serum that is supposed to like dissipate is not and like so this is going to cause a lot of problems and it's going to make this person at some point very aggressive and even when Frank was to supposedly make an, an adjustment, like, that adjustment just didn't work out. It just happened the same exact way that that dog was to happen. So, we start to have at some point that Zoe is to know what people are saying while they're saying it, and... Then she gets to the point where she can read minds. And so... Zoe ends up realizing that a lot of people don't trust her. 
And so she's starting to realize that she's becoming an outcast or that like, well, hey, like, I don't know how long that she's probably worked with them, but like, I would kind of use that to her benefit. It's like, like, how long have you known me? So Zoe just starts to, because she can't trust these people, she decides to start taking them out with her new found power where it seems that she can be able to move things with her mind. So the first person she ends up taking down is Nico. And so Zoe ends up like trying to use Nico and starts kissing on him because it seems that both of them were much more closer than anyone else besides Zoe and Frank. So Zoe goes on to meet with Nico and tries to start kissing on him. And Nico is like, no, like you're with somebody. So Zoe is to go on and talk to Nico. And it seems that Nico is to want to just kill Zoe because it's the right thing to do at this point. And so Zoe uses her powers to push Nico's character to then have him go into this little like storage uh, cabinet and then Zoe ends up tightening uh, the cabinet that Nico's in to then crush him and kill him off. So Zoe, after killing Nico, is to meet with the other characters, and at some point she is to have like these mirrors break, and she is to be in this couch, and at some point she kind of wakes up and is to have these blackened eyes and is to kind of hover above her couch, four feet above her couch. So We turn to now have at some point where uh, we have Ray, who throughout most of this movie is to have this like vape or this like e cigarette, and he's consistently like smoking or puffing or whatever. So we ha we have Zoe that is to realize that. Clay is to have this cigarette, so she goes on and is to use her power to have this vapor, that e-cigarette, go into Clay's mouth and he starts choking on it. We have Frank who quickly tries to rush to pull the cigarette out, but he's having to really like get in there and and get it out. So that's when, of course, Frank is to possibly realize, like, well, like maybe Zoe is the cause of this. So we have Frank and Eva. And so Frank ends up giving Eva this syringe. And Frank is to go on and tell Eva that he had made a massive mistake and he's realized that now. And so, like, no matter what happens, like, make sure that this girl, like, doesn't get out of here alive. Because they start to realize, like, the doors, they can't open the doors in this laboratory. And so, Eva is to separate from Frank and so Zoe ends up finding Frank and Frank is to tell Zoe like all that she's ever wanted to hear and then Zoe is to like ask Frank it's like well okay is this really true as Zoe is to read Frank's mind to come to find out that no this is not true he's just kind of using her 
and or he's just kind of manipulating her and so Zoe picks up on that and so she then goes on to kind of foam up Frank's mouth and I think just starts crushing his head to kill him off here. So now the only person really left in this situation here is to be Eva. So Eva also in this movie is to somehow while she was sleeping was to at some point have the exact same dream that Eva was to have because she had gone on and explained it. And they're like, well, like, what does this mean exactly? And really, excuse me, um, really it could be a, a number of things. Um, that uh, Eva could have overheard Zoe talking about this dream and all of a sudden she is to have the same dream coincidentally or that Zoe uses this dream as a way to hurt people like it had hurt her and I don't know there could be any number of reasons for this dream sequence but so Eva is to be sleeping and then she wakes up and realizes she had had a similar dream to Zoe's and then come to find out we have Eva and Zoe who face off here and Eva is to jab Zoe with this needle thinking that all is to be good and done with and so Eva ends up kind of relaxing and chilling out until we do have some firefighters that come in there and Eva thinks that she had gone on and she had beaten Zoe. Come to find out we then have Zoe's body that disappears and uh, Zoe is to now be one of these firefighters and she is to snap the neck of Eva. And so by the end of this movie we end up seeing that Zoe is to go on and take guys like Frank and resurrect them and possibly going to go on and uh, resurrect a number of other people but we'll kind of see if there ever was going to be a sequel to this film so other than that I like uh, I think that is a good enough explanation uh, I think I got to almost everything uh, maybe not everything is going to be perfect or to the T of every single word that is to be said or I didn't go into the, like the whole uh, DMT dialogue uh, where they're talking about whether or not uh, like an afterlife legitimately does exist and what and Zoe being a religious person and so on and so forth and they kind of talk about religion a little bit in this movie but other than that, I think that covers this movie. So I think I'm just going to try and get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, there might have been, like, some blank spots here when I was to talk about this film. Just because, really, I was uh, already to just be a little bit uh, a little bit tired. Um, but anyways, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. I wanted to mention about the dream sequence. So, we had Eva who, again, faces off against Zoe in the dream sequence yet again, where Eva is to then realize that the reason for this dream sequence is that Zoe had one on to burn down this complex that she was at when she was a young girl and since I guess that this is the worst thing that this girl had ever gone on and done she feels very guilty about it and so Zoe I guess was to have done this as a little girl and so Eva is to try to protect this little girl and 
hoping that maybe this will be the good side of Zoe, uh, and that maybe Eva can defeat the bad side of Zoe with the good side, and then maybe that will resolve all this. But instead, Eva is to go on and get out of this uh, kind of dream that she's in to then go on and try to face off against Zoe and inject her with this syringe, but doesn't quite pan out at the end of this story. And so yeah, like that's the only thing that I had left to really talk about. Actually, I think I kind of spaced out a little bit by then. Uh, but other than that, I think I'm just going to go on and just get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.